BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned 88 on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And just a quick reminder every Monday is Zodiac Mondays. Wednesday is an Ask Me Anything. That's an AMA, so please drop your questions below for things that you would like discussed here on the show. And Friday is an Anything Goes. Any subject is fair game, mostly talking about true crime, serial killers, the Zodiac Killer, but any subject is welcome. All right, so please share some ideas in the comment section about what you would like to hear about on this channel, and let's get started. Okay, hello everybody. Today is Friday. Another Anything Goes Friday. Welcome to the show. Today I will be talking all about the case of James Leininger and a book that was written about him called Soul Survivor, as well as some outside criticisms and commentary of the story. But first I would like to remind you guys that I am also the host of the program Astro Psych 400 here on YouTube. And you can listen to that channel and all of the episodes for free. But there's a special series out now called the Podcast for Sleep. Some people were saying that they use this show, Black Box Online Radio, to fall asleep at night. And I thought, why not create a podcast that is specifically customized for that? And the episodes will be coming out on the weekends on Astro Psych 400 here on YouTube. Please like and subscribe. And another great way to support both channels is to go over to Amazon.com and have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse by me, Ned DeHaan. It is a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is fictional. However, who doesn't love a good mystery? And there is always the Teespring page. Feel free to have a look at some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. I received a message from Drew Beeson, who is the host of the show The Zodcast, also available here on YouTube, and he made a recommendation for a BBOR episode, and that would be about the story of James Leininger, and a book was written about his life called Soul Survivor, and to get straight to the point, this deals with a possible case of reincarnation that may have been documented in our time. But I would like to remind you guys that this is an episode that was requested by one of the listeners and contributors. Drew has shared a lot with me for this program, as well as being a guest on the Zodiac Killer Channel's interviews with the experts, which I also host that program. So if anybody has any ideas for future episodes for the Anything Goes segment or Zodiac Mondays, or you just have questions that you would like used on the AMA, that's the Ask Me Anything, you can put your ideas down in the comments section down below, or you can send them to blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com, as well as Facebook, Instagram, all of my details are in the personal, uh, are in the description box there, personal ways to contact me. But first, um, let's have a introduction onto who was, who is rather, James Leininger, and this is going to come straight from Amazon.com about the book Soul Survivor, and the story of James Leininger, who a little more than two weeks after his second birthday began having blood-curdling nightmares that just would not stop. When James began screaming out recurring phrases like, plane on fire, little man can't get out, the Leiningers finally admitted that they truly had to take notice when details of planes and war tragedies no two-year-old boy could know and continued even in stark daylight. Bruce and Andrea Leininger began to realize that this was an incredible situation. Soul Survivor is the story of how the Leiningers pieced together what their son was communicating and eventually discovered that he was reliving the past life of a World War II fighter pilot named James Huston. As Bruce Leininger struggled to understand what was happening to his son, he also uncovered details of James Huston's life and death as a pilot that will fascinate military buffs everywhere. In Soul Survivor, we are taken for a gripping ride as the Leininger's belief system is shaken to the core, and both of these families come to know a little boy who, against all odds, and even in the face of true skeptics, harbors the soul of this man who died long ago. And one more time, the book is called Soul Survivor. I first heard this story years ago. They, I believe that the family was on a television program promoting the book Soul Survivor after it had recently come out. And I was rather blown away at the time 
because I simply did not know what to make of it. This was definitely the first time that I had heard the story of reincarnation, but a human being being able to recall memories from a previous life. And while I do approach these things with a degree of skepticism, I simply did not know what to make of it. But then I was just on YouTube a couple of years later, and I happened to encounter the story of a boy from the United Kingdom who would say some very similar things, except he wouldn't talk about World War II. He talked about the Scottish island called Barrow, and he would talk about his Barrow mum and his Barrow dad. He would relive the memories of someone who was living on that island. And I thought, oh, that really reminded me of this book called Soul Survivor that I had seen the uh, discussion about on the television show years ago. And then, even later on, I happened to find out that the Biography Channel was airing a program called The Ghost Inside My Child, and that this is something that happens very frequently. And I did do one episode about that here on Black Box All Night Radio, talking about um, The Ghost Inside My Child, and you can find it under just that title, What is the Ghost Inside My Child? And somebody put it into a playlist of content related to the show, so... Lots of people listened to it and much appreciated um, for, to people who checked out that episode in the past, but I would invite you to listen into the fu in the future. However, a lot of that will be covered in this episode here. Now, is this really possible? Are children born with the essence of another human being, the soul of another human being, as this book is called Soul Survivor, the Reincarnation of a World War II Fighter Pilot? Is that possible, or is there something else going on? If you think that... It's impossible. How would this boy James be able to recall specific details about being trapped on a plane or just knowledge that a two-year-old should not have or even a three- or four-year-old? I mean, if, if, if it isn't him actually remembering a past life, then what is happening? After Drew Beeson made the recommendation for doing an episode on this subject, he sent me an email with a paper that had been written by Michael Lee Suddeth who wanted to explore that very question, if this is not the case of someone who is genuinely recalling memories of a past life when we're dealing with a reincarnated soul, then what could be happening? And I do want to emphasize, there are numerous people who have come forward and said that they have had a child, they've known a child who, who has had these types of experiences. And I would like to read, uh, in academic terms, the abstract of the paper that has been written by by Michael Sodeth about the James Leininger case. In the James Leininger case re-examined, which was written, this was actually written for the Journal of Scientific Exploration, I examine alleged, an alleged case of reincarnation previously investigated and analyzed by Dr. Jim Tucker, M.D. The case concerns Louisiana boy James Leininger, originally presented in Bruce and Andrea Leininger's book, Soul Survivor, which came out in 2009. Around the time of his second birthday, James Leininger began having nightmares of being trapped in a burning plane. He subsequently provided further details about ongoing nightmares, and he said he was a pilot who flew off a boat. The Japanese shot his plane down and it crashed in the water, and that's how he died. As his nightmares persisted, James continued to make further claims about World War II, especially details about fighter planes. James' parents attempted to verify his claims. Eventually, they determined that his behaviors and claims matched the life of James M. Huston, Jr. Huston was a World War II fighter pilot killed in action on March 3rd of 1945. The resemblances to Huston's life eventually convinced the Leinigers that their son was the reincarnation of Huston. Jim Tucker investigated the case in 2010, and in subsequent publications, he provided a favorable analysis of the case. Other reincarnation researchers have agreed and regard the Leininger story as a superior American case of the reincarnation type. And I do want to point out, though, that while there was this show called what The Ghost Inside My Child, which I don't believe actually aired on the biography channel originally, that some memory just came back to me from this life, not a previous life, but I think that actually aired on another network. I just happened to find it on the biography channel. But... The whole point is that, yes, many people claim that their kids had these experiences. However, the story of James and Soul Survivor was the first one that I ever heard about, and definitely I think it made an impact because, as I said, 
after I learned about that one, I learned about the publicity surrounding other children who have had very similar experiences. The possibility that they have memories of a past life, or as um, the title says, Soul Survivor, that they actually have some some essence of another person, like the soul of another person. I'll keep reading here from Michael's paper. Between 2019 and 2021, I investigated the James Leininger story. My investigation included extensive fact-checking and discussions with over a dozen people familiar with different aspects of the case. In this paper, I present my findings and their implications for the evaluation of the case as evidence for reincarnation. I conclude that the James Leininger story does not provide evidence for reincarnation. The favorable assessment of this case depends on the assumption that the official narrative is robust and credible. I argue that the chronology of events that provides the factual scaffolding of this case is neither robust nor credible. This is especially true with respect to what are the case's strongest features. The narrative is not robust. It excludes salient contextual details about James's exposure to ordinary sources of information. These sources of information include videos, museum visits, and others that plausibly shape James's experiences and informed his claims and behaviors. And the official chronology of events doesn't clearly track how the Leinigers had inadvertently introduced sources of information as part of the process of verifying James's claims. The narrative is also not credible. The presumed facts of the case depend on the testimony of Bruce and Andrea Leininger, but their testimony is unreliable. They presented multiple iterations of their story with incompatible accounts of what James said and what and when he said it. Their story involves suspicious narrative redactions, fact fudging, and a suppression of the facts that disconform crucial aspects of their story. They've also failed to detect James's exposure to many important and ordinary sources of information which plausibly influenced him. These two defects, lack of narrative and robustness, credibility, also vitiate Jim Tucker's investigation and the presentation on the case. Consequently, his favorable assessment of the case as evidence for reincarnation is unwarranted. And all those words there you heard were the uh, writings of uh, Michael Sodeth, and you can hear read the entire thing, the James Lineker case, re-examined. So, firstly, um, is that just what this is? That there is ex exposure to sources and not remembering where they came from? Okay, he's not actually remembering something from a previous life. Instead, James is remembering things from a museum visit, and part of it is his own imagination, because I think I talked about this a little bit in that first episode that I did, What is the Ghost Inside My Child?, where skeptics would almost certainly just say, oh, well, it's all in the kid's head. There's no essence. There's no soul of another person. This is just a product of overactive imagination. But um, I think that uh, Michael's writing has also provided the explanation that this could be exposure to sources that are very difficult to document, such as a museum visit or maybe some type of television program. And I told you that I had seen that documentary in the past about the boy who thought that he was born on a Scottish island that he was, should that he hadn't visited the island of Barrow. And in that documentary, when they brought him to the island of Barrow, and he was supposed to, you know, recall places that he had been to under those types of control conditions, he was unable to do so. I mean, to the point where it doesn't appear that he is actually remembering them. And children operate in a way that is very different than that of adults. And just because... I guess we have to almost go into some new territory with this part of the discussion, but just because children are talking about something, it doesn't mean that they necessarily believe it. I mean, children will just say anything that fuels their own excitement, and sometimes just carries on into adulthood, and that creates a whole, whole string of problematic behaviors for people. But... I mean, sometimes they're just having fun with something. But then you might be thinking, okay, this boy James, he's having these nightmares about being a 
pilot trapped in a burning plane. Well, that certainly doesn't sound like he um, is having fun with it. It actually sounds like some type of bizarre night terror. So if anything, Michael's assessment might be more accurate, that it isn't simply the overactive imagination of some kid who is just uh, playing around. Instead, it seems like someone who was influenced by outside sources. And at this time, though, I would just like to ask you guys, do you believe that it is possible at all that reincarnation could exist? And I don't mean reincarnation in the sense that, okay, somebody passes away as a human being, and then they are reborn as a seagull or a goose or a, a moose even. I mean, I mean, like I'm trying to find animals that don't rhyme, and it's very hard right now. But, I mean, some people think that you might be reborn as a plant like a ficus or something. I'm not really thinking too much about that, but that the essence of one human being can be transferred to another. Do you believe that that type of reincarnation is possible? Why or why not? As you can probably tell from this, I am very skeptical of these types of behaviors or these types of claims. And when I was reading that description on Amazon, it says very clearly that the parents, particularly his father, played a very large role in establishing the story and the aspects of reincarnation. I'll read that paragraph from the Amazon description one more time. Soul Survivor is the story of how the Leinigers pieced together what their son was communicating and eventually discovered that he was reliving the life of a World War II fighter pilot named James Huston. As Bruce struggled to understand what was happening to his son, he also uncovered details of James Huston's life and death as a pilot that will fascinate military buffs everywhere. I thought that that paragraph was extremely awkward because, number one, it's not only um, containing the explanation that the parents were the ones who actually drew um, drew up the connections. They, they, they connected the dots and created this narrative, but there's also the selling point about how it's going to fascinate military buffs. So, I mean, as I said, approaching it with a degree of skepticism, those are some major red flags for me. I think it would be one thing, like uh, maybe the uh, boy from Barrow was a better example, talking about how he remembers his mom on the island of Barrow, he remembers his father on the island of Barrow, and well, he's actually saying that he was there, and yet he was around these people, and that even sounds a little bit more convincing to simply say that you have a nonspecific recollection, and then the parents are the ones who are encouraging and escalating this type of behavior. And the fact is that it's in a description of a book on Amazon.com. Not only are they not trying to hide it, I mean, maybe hiding in plain sight, but that's about it. So I think that um, Michael made a very strong attempt to provide an explanation as to how James could be recalling these things, and the role of outside sources and its impact on someone's memory should not be downplayed. Memory is a very bizarre concept because it's not always accurate. And, you know, somebody once told me that 50% of your childhood memories are probably not real. And I don't think that it's that extreme. I think that that was perhaps a hyperbolic statement on that person's part. But I can comprehend what people are saying, that the specific details and the origin of something can get lost so frequently. I mean, our memories are not always accurate. So, where, like, where did somebody first learn about something? Maybe, you know, like, say, for example, let's use the museum visit, how that could have um, inspired James to start uh, recalling some of these things. You know, seeing, like, an image on a museum display or maybe watching something on TV. And then as a two-year-old and a three-year-old and a four-year-old not being able to um, differentiate what actually happened on the TV as opposed to something that he saw in a nightmare and thinking that it's all part of one timeline. Uh, crazier things have happened. But I would also like to talk about memory in general for a little bit because have you ever been watching a movie or a TV show and you know a very funny joke in that movie or TV show or a very funny uh, moment or maybe it's just something insightful, a piece of wisdom. It doesn't even have to be humorous. And then you're watching the movie again, a movie that you've seen four or five times, and then you hear what they said, and it's like, oh dear, they said something similar, but that brilliant comedic line or that nugget of wisdom, 
they didn't exactly say it the way that I remembered it. I mean, mostly it's the same nutshell version, or it's the same premise, the same concept, but it is it was worded differently. As human beings, the concept of memory and the origin of memory um, are not uh, very strong. And an example of this is, I was listening back to um, an episode of Black Box Online Radio, and I was thinking about a quotation that I heard once on a podcast that I use frequently, and it is, if you watch what you say, you will watch your life get better. I thought it was from the Big Mood channel, but it turns out it was actually from the Feel Good Effect. Okay, I did remember it, but the origin of it was different. I had forgotten it for like a year and a half. I had been thinking something that was untrue. But, you know, because I had recorded it for this program in an older episode, I had the ability to correct myself. But as I said, though, this um, phenomenon of a child being able to remember uh, experiences from someone else's life is way beyond just one book, Soul Survivor, or that one documentary about the island of Barrow. There was even the show, The Ghost Inside My Child. And first I would like to read the show's description that's been put out by FYI. Children sometimes report remembering experiences from past lives, with many accounts being documented and researched since the 1950s. Ghost Inside My Child features stories from children who have vivid memories that belong to other people and spotlights their families who want to figure out who the children were in previous lives. Some stories include a girl who remembers being inside the Empire State Building when a plane crashed into it. A boy remembers a tragic fall that ended his life, and a girl details memories of a tribal rite of passage. And as I said, Michael Suddeth was the guy who authored the paper on the book Soul Survivor and um, made a lot of challenges to it. And I was talking to him about the program The Ghosts Inside My Child, and he has written this. Fox journalist Suzanne Stratford was involved in the program The Ghost Inside My Child, and I had a long Zoom chat with her several months ago in connection to the James Leininger story. She has also interviewed the Leininger several times years ago and provided some helpful insights about the case. I'm guessing you've seen the Netflix series Surviving Death, loosely based on Leslie Keen's book by the same title. And actually, no, I haven't, but that is definitely going to be at the top of my watch list. That series had a segment on the Leinigers and the episode on reincarnation. Unfortunately, the story has no evidential weight, and it's unfortunate that Jim Tucker at the University of Virginia, he was the doctor that I mentioned uh, previously, did such a poor job of investigating the case, just missed all sorts of ordinary sources of information that the boy was exposed to. This is just one of several glaring problems which I document in my paper. There are two basic issues in all such cases. Are the presumed facts, the actual and only salient facts, or the inferences from the facts cogent. In the Leininger case, neither is true. In other cases, maybe, it's a shame that researchers are not more conscientious. They make dubious logical inferences. Curiously, you've called out some of these questionable kinds of inferences when you talk about the Zodiac Killer. Bad reasoning crops in all areas of inquiry. And some of the points covered in this one are that, um, they could have been exposed to different pieces of information, and that there can be the concept of conflation, mistaking two things, or thinking that two things are actually the same thing. And there's a post that was written on Reddit about the show The Ghost Inside My Child, and I know that I try to avoid reading off other people's Reddit posts on the program, but from time to time, you do encounter one that does catch your attention. And this was written by... French Chick 16. Has anyone else watched the, the show The Ghost Inside My Child? This show is interesting to me as it explores multiple counts of past life memories that some children have. However, it hurts me to see many of the parents putting their children in positions where they have to move on from their past life memories. It makes me sad to see that these kids, sometimes young adults, being put in a position to move on at the request of someone else. Maybe they don't want to move on. Maybe they shouldn't. It seems like these kids are being denied a central part of who they are, even if that personality is part of a past life. I don't know, I've just been binge-watching it, and I have found myself more and more frustrated with some of these parents. And when I was reading this one the first time, 
I really didn't think that the show, this post was going to go in that direction when it said, however, it hurts me to see many of the parents putting their children in these positions. I thought that that was going to be more about how they're putting their kid on a TV show and maybe the kid or even a young adult. I mean, like depending on someone's in the teenage years, maybe they don't truly understand what's going on. And I, that's what I thought the focus of this post was going to be. But you heard very clearly that this person is saying that they're trying to get the uh, kids to deny their experiences in the past life. And, I mean, I talk a lot about self-help on um, Astro Psych 400, and you do encounter that very concept all the time, exactly what the parents have been uh, doing, and that is to get people to focus on the present, focus on the here and now, not to dwell on the past, even if it's in a good way because it is a distraction. It is the concept of psychological noise. Physical noise are the sounds that we hear. Psychological noise is the uh, the array of, 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 of memories and ideas that distract us, and they would view that as something that is, and it, it is a distraction all the same. And I'm only guessing because I've never firsthand had a child of my own who was experiencing these memories of a past life. But, as I said, imagining, I would think that it would be somewhat of a hindrance for that person to go through life always thinking that they have memories of somebody else, whether it's the World War II fighter pilot or somebody who lived on a Scottish island or someone who jumped off the Empire State Building or any of the other uh, people who have been covered in the show The Ghost Inside My Child. I, um think that that would definitely be a major distraction as well as just um it would be a pathway that would be going that people would explore in an inefficient way i mean to make use of time always dwelling on someone else's life experiences which and that person may not have even existed it might be a pure pure creation of someone's own imagination but I think um, at the end of this episode, the conclusion that I can draw is that it is quite possible that a lot of these children are experiencing false memories and that they might might genuinely believe that these things happen to them. And I, I was very hesitant to even talk about this part of it, but sometimes we come up with a silly story and we don't remember that it's a silly story it turns out that it's actually something that we start to think is real, that people genuinely believe the falsehood. They believe the false variant of the story because they've said it so long, and then you're just like, oh, wait a second, no, no, that wasn't true. We were just making that up, and the true thing is actually something far more boring and mundane. But... I don't, I don't want to call anybody a liar, especially not children, and I don't think, it, I think most people, most people do not refer to these children as liars, instead they might just simply say that they are mistaken, and I did say though there are red flags in that Amazon description for the book Soul Survivor, uh, but anyone is welcome to read that, and I encourage everybody to take a look at that one, and I think that will bring us to the end of this episode here, but as always, you can follow the show on Astro Psych 400, as well as, of course, this one, Black Box Online Radio. Please like and subscribe. And anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at AOL.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box. And my in, my Instagram is blackboxnid88. And remember the challenge question, do you believe that reincarnation is possible? Why or why not? Okay, well, that's all for me now. I will see you over on Instagram for the bonus podcast. Until next time.